John F. Kennedy once said, mankind must put an end to war before war puts an end to mankind. Wise words, but not a single country seems to follow them, especially not Kennedy's own. Our world is locked in a permanent state of warfare. Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Ukraine. The theatres change, but the destruction does not. In most cases, these wars are avoidable. There is always a path of diplomacy if you look for it. Unfortunately, world leaders do not. They prefer to use violence and bloodshed to achieve their goals. Discussion and dialogue are forgotten. On Monday, we decided to change that. We on hosted the fifth edition of its global summit in Dubai. This year's theme was Mission Peace. Top policymakers, ministers, corporate leaders, all the big names were in attendance. And in the next couple of minutes, we get to the top five highlights. Number one, the calls for a multilateral world order. This was echoed by our keynote speaker, Abdullah Shahid. He is the foreign minister of the Maldives, also the president of the United Nations General Assembly. Minister Shahid said that multilateralism is a necessity, not an option. And the tool to achieve it, major reforms at the United Nations. Listen in. We affirmed during last year's declaration to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, multilateralism is not an option, but a necessity. That is why I have consistently called for the realization of the United Nations General Assembly and the reform of the UN Security Council. Highlight number two, what fuels war? Our second keynote speaker had an interesting answer. Former Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. According to him, war is kept alive by Western capitalism. It's true even in Ukraine. Only one group is benefiting from Russia's war. That group is the military industrial complex. The defense companies are making windfall gains arms race and competing in order to gain annual interests in hundreds of billions of dollars justifies and explains the reason why the strategy of war exists at all. It needs to be underscored that the economy of the hegemonic system and at its forefront, the global capitalism, is apparently an economy of war. Basically, without war, capitalism will be incapable of continuing to brief. On to highlight number three, the future of Taiwan. A lot of people have been drawing parallels between Ukraine and Taiwan. If Putin could invade Ukraine, what's stopping Xi Jinping from invading Taiwan? Japan's former junior minister of defense weighed in on this question. He said if Xi Jinping is smart, he will not invade Taiwan. Also, that a lot depends on American action. Xi Jinping is smart. I, I don't think he's going to invade, try to invade Taiwan. But there is, a, of course, a possibility, and uh, there is a, the, some luck. If there, I think he is thinking the, the two, two ways. One is a peaceful way. The other one is a forcing by the military action, I mean the Chinese PLA. And which option he's going to cho choose is, I think it depends on the, the world leader of the uh, the superpower is, which is the United States of America. Highlight number four, the focus on building peace. We often talk about peace as something that comes after war. But Afghanistan's former minister, Shah Mahmood Mayakhel, had a different take. He gave the example of his own country, Afghanistan. The United States spent billions of dollars making war in Afghanistan. Peace was an objective after the war. Instead, the focus should be on peace building, creating systems and checks that prevent war in the first place. Agencies like the United Nations were supposed to do that, but their track record is riddled with failures. The operation of the U.S., you know, thousands, hundreds, thousands of soldiers were there. A lot of money was spent. But the actual problem was not tackled there. It was just like more uh, like cure, just symptoms, but not the real problem, which is how to build an institution, to have a democratic process in a country, 
uh, inclusion of people in decision making. Highlight number five, widespread appreciation of Weon's reportage. Ukraine's Deputy Foreign Minister praised the Weon team for its reportage in Kiev. My news were among the first to visit Ukraine on the eve of the Russian aggression and stayed there during the most difficult days of the Russian aggression. I would like to thank Ms. Palki Sharma Opadhaya for her courage demonstrated in Ukraine in those tragic days. The big headline from the summit was this. There is an appetite for peace across the world. In the West, in Asia, even in Russia, there is a yearning for peace. But there is no consensus on how to build that peace. Western experts, for example, denied NATO's expansionism. They say it's not real. And that is the next big challenge for the world. Not agreeing on peace, but setting the terms for that peace. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.